Welcome to Visionaries Global Media, your number one source for podcasting entertainment. Visionaries Global Media, envisioning excellence on a global scale. This is Band from Ringside. Tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast, MJF and Kenny Omega go 30 minutes on collision. The Callis family adds a new member, Edge. Joins Edge is going to join Sting at full gear against Christian and his band of ne'er do wells. And your crown jewel predictions that and a whole bunch more tonight on the Band from Ringside podcast. Ditch that nine to five. It's time to feel alive. Hello, Mark. So welcome to the Band from Ringside podcast. As always, I'm your host Bill Veggie, aka. Jobby Knight, <laughs> former head coach of the Inside Cradle, Pindiana Hoosiers, <laughs> sitting directly across from me. We have Jason Cornelius Bell. What's going on, JCB? Rolling down the street, smoking and dough, listening, listening to BFR. Laid back. Sounds like a road trip, baby. That's why I'm gonna be doing this week. On the way to Kansas City for a weekend, uh, a wedding, wedding weekend. Can't wait. I should be all fucked up. Cannot wait to hit an open bar. That's going to be my favorite fucking thing. And on that level, you know, our ask and congregation to ask the their heads that I read from the latest edition of the Band from Ringside podcast, volume 332, chapter 3, verse 14. And the good smart say it, hashtag boo the heels. It's all good, baby. Listen, share, subscribe, repeat. <sighs> I'm going to miss Crown Jewel. That's the only negative part about this. I'll be driving to Kansas City at that point, but at some point I'll be drunk enough to sit in and watch four hours of uh, WrestleMania 2.0, I'll call it for this point, but I digress. Please. And out there in Portland, Oregon, we have three beers. Zach Pullman, what's going on? Three beers, Zach? Bear for West is in the house. Oh, uh, man, uh, I am moving this weekend, so I will not get to – relax and enjoy crown jewel the wonderful saturday daytime pay-per-view uh in its true form uh, but i'm excited to move i'm uh, moving into a place with a hot tub which i was telling these guys before we started i was way more excited to do before this week but uh yeah um that's it my life is in turmoil and i cannot but i'm happy to be back on the podcast i can't believe he didn't I can't believe he didn't broach the subject that I thought he was going to broach. I, I was I, if walk away. Yeah, I was going to say if you didn't pay me money on whether or not he would have said it, I was, psh, that's a slam. I dunk. was expecting a little Chandler Zing there. Yeah, you I was know what I mean? say that's Jesus. the that's the Stone Cold Lead Pipe Lock of the Week. Got a lost points on that bitch. <laughs> and so I, they, just, I just skirted the issue. I didn't. I didn't do a, a deep dive. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. And sitting to my right, we have Vice. Hey, Vice. What up, turn? <laughs> Hey, I'm just happy to be here. I know we're doing predictions, so like, I figured the show would be bigger than uh, Paul White's nipples. <laughs> oh, God damn. Man, Big Show does not look like he is having an easy time walking. I felt no, bad No, they him. ran up to him. I was felt like, oh, God, Jesus for... Christ. Come and get it, guys. <laughs> Dude, his, his legs look like they Dude. moved in cursive. <laughs> We are his coming fucking, in. His fucking knees look like HBK's eyes. Oh, no! <laughs> it's like his tights are written in italics. <laughs> We're coming at you from beautiful St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, we are post-Halloween. You know what that means. That means me and Jason's B-Days are coming Scorpio up. season, so hope, bitch! Hope you guys are a red. No, no spooky season. It's Scorpio season now. But uh, plenty of stuff to get to. Let's stop fucking around. Let's get to that three count. Oh, shit. Paul White, easily the biggest guy we dunked on so far. <laughs> Come find us. Come find BFR. Poor guy. Poor guy. JCB. He's just, he's just standing underneath the rim like, what? <laughs> poor bastard. JCB, kick it off. What's going on? Uh, let's talk some uh, main event before we even talk about Crown Jewel. Just some things to kind of touch on. Um, building to Crown Jewel. Bianca comes back. Obviously, she has a uh, promo. She's ready to come back to def- regain the title back from EO Sky. That's a match made for Crown Jewel. Um, I want to talk about the Creeds for 30 seconds. Uh, they had two matches, really good matches, both on NXT and on Raw. Um, if the Creeds aren't coming up, I don't know what the fuck they're doing with that. I thought they were had. I think I heard it's official. They're 
They're up. Okay, because I was going to say, if they when they beat Alpha Academy, I was like, okay, that is a a queer signal. NXT call ups don't just come up to the main roster and beat guys on the main roster. I don't care who it is. I don't care how you look at Alpha Academy. They just don't do it. When they did it, I was like, oh damn. And then they came back and then doubled down on them winning against um, Andrew Garcia and Umboto Carrero on Tuesday night. That's when I was like, okay, this motherfucker is legit. Creeds are on the way to the main roster. Um, LA Knight obviously beats Jimmy on SmackDown, the main event. Cena opens the show once again. Um, I'll say this, and you always say this about John Cena and... I never really got it until Friday night when um, you talk about, you know, he goes into preacher mode. And I was like, what the fuck is Bill talking about? What what preacher mode is he talking about? And then when he did it, I was like, oh, that's what he's talking about. Okay, this is some shit. All right. You never knew what I was talking about? To me, it was always like Cena talking, and I never really, you know, Took what you you run down John Cena a lot. So sometimes some things I listen to and other things I God don't. bless America. God damn America. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and he, I can't remember what he said. I was like, oh shit, that sounds what Bill's talking. About. And he's like, you know, it's trying to you know make a comeback. You know, it's going to be it's something like turn the score around. I was like, oh shit. I was like, that's what Bill's talking about right there. So I I, I will immediately apologize. <laughs> I've been waiting a long time for this. <laughs> I apologize for any disrespect that I said to you about John Cena and a preacher, black preacher um, gimmick or lack thereof. I never really got it until it, and some people it takes the t- a little bit for the light to turn on. It just took a little bit for me the light to turn on for John Cena. It was bad Friday night. It was bad Friday night. It was night. bad. To the point where I was just like high as fuck. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I get it now. <laughs> Please, I digress. Go ahead. Uh, Zach, what did you think about SmackDown? Man, I would love to uh, lie and uh, give you some armchair uh, quarterback situations. But um, my life has been absolute turmoil um i've read recaps of wwe i barely got to watch AEW uh this week no new japan uh but um smackdown is a much livelier show as far as um even just like in the descriptions i know i don't want to put the cart in front of the horse or steal jcb thunder but jesus christ uh like just reading the recap of raw um it's like fucking groundhog day man um I am ready for this pay-per-view. I think WWE is still super hot. There's a lot of fun stuff uh, on the horizon, but, like, they need a fucking shake-up. Like, they need, I don't know, if Seth needs to lose the title, Priest needs to cash in. Something's got to happen because uh, this just seems like the same fucking show every week. Uh, maybe it's not – maybe it doesn't seem like that if you guys have been watching it, but whenever I've just been reading recaps, that's the – that's no. the vibe I've been getting. No, that's what it feels like watching it too. I mean, it's been it's been treading water. Now, I I will say that Raw's floor is a lot higher than it used to be. So when you have a pretty paint by numbers Raw, in fact, there were two paint by numbers Raw episodes this week. The other one being Dynamite. But when you have a pretty paint by numbers Raw like this, it beats how it was four or five or even three years ago when, like, you would just get a, wa- a Raw that was just unwatchable. It was clear that Vince had torn up the script at, like, 6.30 that night and just rewrote everything on the fly, and it's just complete dog shit. This is dog shit, but um, not all of it was. I thought that the the Miz and Gunther segment was off the chain. Actually. That was the next where that was the next place I was getting ready to go. <laughs> Gunther was so good in this segment I, that it, that he it's the first time he's ever been on a talk show in WWE because he respects the ring too much. He thinks that Miz is a joke, and Miz kind of flipped on flipped on his baby face face a, there a for a minute a and kind of got people behind him. Um, and when Miz got pissed off and ran off, uh, DIY was coming out, and Ciampa kind of turned around and looked at Miz like, hey, dude, you okay? And 
I know that Gargano is from Cleveland also, right? Yes. So him and Miz might have some Cleveland love. I don't know where Ciampa's from originally. I'm not sure either. But, um, I, you know, I'd see Miz and DIY versus Imperium. That sounds okay to me. No, I can totally see that. I um, still don't think Miz would be the one to beat Gunther. I just it, – it's a few that I didn't think I wanted until I saw it, and I was like, huh, okay, shit, we can see where this shit goes. It was a, it was interesting to see. I was not excited for it when I saw it coming up either. No. It but, was just like after I saw it executed, I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. Yeah. I was like, okay, we can see where this goes. It's the running story of the Miz constant disrespect, or at least his perceived disrespect. Well, from- he goes like eight months in between wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean but, that, but that's – but he's still a heel. He don't think like that. He He's ready to roll out the resume of the shit he's done, okay? And that's what he always does. The crowd did not like them disrespecting his wife either. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Which, and that's um, and that kind of interesting. Well, it's it's a great way to make a heel look like a baby face yeah. when heels attack Anybody personally, right. wife, kids, you know, you know, fans are like, oh man, oh fuck that, you know, you're a Drew, boo, boo. Even the mean, is, Maurice is, not is a, that. Maurice is a character though. Like it would, and every time she shows up, she's a heel. It's not like Maurice comes out and a baby face. It just shows that she's endeared herself to the audience. They do have a reality show also, which is true. But um, yeah. so so also a playmate. So they're generally pretty likable. Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. Yeah, wait, Sidebar. hold on. Should, let, yeah, let's pause it here for a second. <laughs> wait, horny, Maurice, horny, horny Thursday. Horny Poe's Thursday. Somewhere? What? Yeah, she's a Playboy playmate. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> dun, 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 like, uh, and I think that we may get it this weekend, but we can talk about that later. Uh, Bronson Reed and Miz had a thing backstage. KO and uh, Logan Paul cross paths um, on SmackDown backstage. Now, now that's a match. That's why when they when it happened, I was like, oh, you don't say. Yes, I will watch either hmm. of them wrestle anybody, and wrestling each other sounds pretty cool. <laughs> hey Zach, how do you feel about Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens? the tease that we had for it and that might being a possibility in the future. Uh, that sounds awesome. I'm actually a little scared about what KO might do in that match. Uh, but other than that, uh, it sounds awesome. <laughs> you ain't even lying. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Dragon Lee, Cedric. Um, I felt bad for Cedric at this point because Cedric was the one of the breakout stars of the, uh, the Cruiserweight Classic. And... It was hard to see him become this mid-card uh, enhancement talent, for lack of a better word. I, I had really high hopes for this match because I thought, I mean, you got two guys that can really go in the ring, you know, give them 10, 15 minutes, let them sit back and cook. Hey, can I take the pencil for a second? Please. Give Cedric Alexander and Dragon Lee a best of seven and have them fight every single SmackDown for seven weeks straight. Guaranteed, both of them are over by the end of it. Guaranteed. That's a very fun idea. Okay, I was. You were the person I was going to ask uh, three beer on that one because you were just saying how you've been reading Raw and Raw's been redundant. Would you be, Would you be okay with the best of seven? I mean, if I'm good with it, I mean, but it's it, a little different. Like uh, I feel like those are kind of redundancy at its finest, and it's intentionally. Like, you you know what you're going to get. Um, so you're expecting at least uh, four excellent matches um, at minimum, and you're probably going to get seven. Um, I mean, I think about kind of the best of seven, obviously the most recent one, you know, in AEW, uh, the tag one was phenomenal. But the one from, like, my childhood was Booker T and Chris Benoit for the WCW television title. And that was awesome. Uh, and both those guys were much better for it uh, by the end of it. And um, they were kind of in a similar circumstance. Like, 
ancillary. I know, mean, that's how the bar got guys. together. It was Sheamus versus Cesaro. Yeah, and they fought to that's a no. One. They fought to a no contest in the seventh match. Ah, uh, R.I.P. Damn, I hated the motherfuckers when they first got together. They won me over. Oh, they were a good tag team. No, they won me over. That, yeah. and that, but that's just kudos to both guys. You know, and, you know, putting two singles guys together in classic. I WWE mean, Swagger, fashion. Swagger, and Cesaro as the real, real Americans, Americans was also really good. Yeah, with okay. Zeb Coulter. Go ahead. If it wasn't for the bar, we wouldn't have Murray Man. That's true. This is true. Very true. Because that was when me and Bo ended up sitting next to him at Raw. Ah, Murray. We're wearing our bar shirts. God bless you. He gets called out every episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, that's really Twice. funny that, uh, like, uh, it's really funny that you guys met randomly because, like, obviously I had a lot of mutual friends with him before in St. Louis, though, at the same time. But um, it is funny. I forgot that you guys met at that show just randomly. It was, it was super me. weird, too. Super weird. We think it was, unless it was, unless he was like single white femaleing us. <laughs> well, he kept touching. He, he kept touching your knee. So, <laughs> bringing that shit up. Wait, uh, anything? We got we got plenty of um, WWE coming up later. No, uh, just DIY beats Imperium was the only other thing I really wanted to throw out there. Um, Good to see DIY get the win, get, get the comeback. I just wish they had kind of waited on this, build both teams up, and then make it feel more of a, a bigger deal. But, no, like I said, uh, we can talk about more of this later because uh, obviously we got predictions down the line. Yep. Okay. Let's get to that two count. One, two, three. Two beer. Tell us about something that you did watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, surprisingly – I was one of uh, the few people in America to watch AEW Rampage. I watched it. It was uh, it was worth watching. That was a that was a fun uh, a fun fun show. And uh, did you watch it, Bill? Did you happen to watch it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. Um, but uh, you know. Uh, I tuned in uh, the, because the dramatic of, pause was the great part. It was like, oh, oh, oh. It was like, it was like <laughs> make like sure the, it's on. It's like the only thing I didn't watch. Zach even texted no, us that it was totally worth watching too. It wasn't like uh, over the top amazing or anything, but it was. I read worth about watching. it. It looked pretty good. Usually, it's a skippable show, but um, they did put like a big blow off feud uh, match on there. Um, between Santana and Ortiz, which was kind of surprising. I feel like that's been led up to quite a bit, and then they threw it on Rampage where nobody was really going to see it. And they might do a little bit more with that. But um, as far as, like, grudge matches go, it was pretty good. They did leave it a little open-ended. Uh, Santana did get the pin on Ortiz. I don't know about how you guys feel about it. I feel like in the feud, as far as leading up to the feud, I was kind of rooting for Ortiz. Like, Santana almost was, like, coming off as a dick, even though I think Ortiz was supposed to be the heel. And I think this was supposed to be, like, a babyface win. But I didn't really get that vibe uh, at the end of it. And what do, what do you – how did you guys feel? Um, I felt like Ortiz was the babyface. Uh, Santana was the heel. So, for me, this wasn't uh, much, much of a stretch. You know what I'm saying? Ortiz coming back and, you know, saying, you know, I'm going to take your knees out, you know, shit like that. That was very heelish, no question about that. So now you you have that almost gray area where it's a tweener now in Ortiz and a heel as far as I was concerned in the returning Mike Santana. His verbiage, his actions, none of the, th- the things that he's done or said since he's come back has changed. So at the end, seeing Santana reaching down to help Ortiz up was a little bit off script, so to speak. I can't say I was rooting for either or guy because ultimately, you know, in my heart of hearts, I want them to, you know, cook this beef on the grill and then, you know, sit down on at the table and, you know, hash the meal out and get back together and become tag team champions. That That's just, you know, a nigga's dream and all. But, um I thought this was pretty good. You know, it just the build up was better than the match. At least that's me. Sure. Yeah. But uh, I, I was like, I wanted to like 
tune in and like check it out and it was fine uh but yeah they beat each other up and uh but yeah maybe more to come there but, Sanjay uh, the coming reason- out is it was is to me the open ended part because now if you have Ortiz fucking with Sanjay Dutt that would definitely make him he'll he'll be one of the heaters for the uh the Jared uh Jay Lethal group the fucking carnival of oddities Jesus Christ <laughs> Dude, that, that's exactly what that feels like. I don't Dude. know if it's because of the Sotnam thing, but it just feels we, like a We've been fucking looking for carnival. three hours, Pee-wee. Okay. Them motherfuckers <laughs> are literally the odd job crew of a stable I've ever seen in my life. Or a faction, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're all words. about the star and, like, the next, like, Guillermo del Toro anthology series. Dog. Okay. I know I've made this joke before, but it's like I've walked onto the fucking bus station in the Total Recall movie. <laughs> <laughs> that is him, for sure. And yeah. you add Ortiz to that, you're going to have a little-ass Ortiz, big-ass uh, Sotnam Singh, and all these jokers in the middle. Get the fuck out of here, man. Go ahead. Yeah, they need, like, some Latinx flair. They got, like, they got everything else it's in goddamn there. goddamn United um, Nations. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, but the real reason I watched this, this uh, episode not because it had a marquee match, but it sure as shit had a match that I wanted to see. And that was the main event, which was Kyle Fletcher and uh, Kanosuke Takeshita. And holy shit, if these guys didn't have a super fun match. This is like the kind of sleeper match. It's not going to be match of the year. Um, it's not going to be anything that we'll be talking about even next week. But like in the moment when I'm like just watching like a one hour, uh, a one hour television show, like wrestling television show, which I think rampage often because of the lack of like kind of marquee booking and uh importance and storylines and stuff um it often gets skipped because there's four other hours of AEW television but like i really enjoy a one hour wrestling show and i watched a one hour wrestling show that was headlined by this match and i'll be goddamned if that wasn't super fun to watch Mm -hmm. and i'm glad that i watched it i was gonna say Kyle Fletcher can't be on at least my uh, BFR uh, B for awards for mo- most underrated anymore because I've already basically said he's the uh, the next coming of Will Ospreay. He's just a, a you know a, a copy thereof. Dare I say copy and paste? This is just more so to me, just reaffirming what I already know, at least what I think I know. Um, yeah, if you slept on this match, shame on you. But, yeah, if you, if you get a chance, go check it out. Kyle Fletcher is the truth. Takesha is the real deal. And to see them go for, like, 12, 15 minutes, whatever it was, um, it, it was worth the watch. I mean, that that's all. I'm not saying go out and watch the whole episode. You could definitely go back and watch that particular match for sure. Yeah, no, it was fun. Uh, and then uh, Collision was, you know, there was uh, some uh, good stuff. Uh, on here, especially the main event. So this was a show worth watching. Uh, but kind of, again, bookended pretty good. AR Fox versus Switchblade. Totally solid match, getting Switchblade a win. Uh, AR Fox hasn't been on TV since his whole slip up with uh, dude, not just dude, being you stole, able to go out of- You stole my thunder. I'm sitting there watching that shit Saturday night like, damn, what if he'd have had his passport? How how much of his shit would change if he'd have had his fucking passport? He'd have went to Wembley. He'd have probably took the L in Wembley, which would have been fine. It it, it, it wouldn't have mattered. No worries. You're going to come back and be okay. Then we would have came back and had him and Swerve together just basically now being like a two-headed, you know, and not not dancing to the, the – my head's getting ready to explode just thinking of the possibilities of AR Fox and Swerve as a two-headed monster for Mogul Embassy. I was and I, and I knew he was going to lose this match, and I'm sitting there like, man, what could have been, dog? What could have been? And that to me was the, the – I had to go back and rewatch it again because like five minutes, I was just like, man, you know, I was already fancy booking AR Fox to what he could have been doing with Mogul Embassy. Oh, you wouldn't have been able to hold us back. We'd be tearing the streets apart. <laughs> We'd be swerving everywhere. What are you, all right, what are you guys talking about? Um, I came in late. No, we just finished up with Rampage, and we're opening up with Collision oh, with okay. AR Fox and Switchboy Jay White right. opening the show. And Zach said that, you know, what could have been for AR Fox if he only had his uh, passport. And I was thinking the same thing, you know, 
if he had his passport, he goes to Wembley. He probably takes the L in the six-man tag, but he comes back looking strong. Yeah. Him and Swerve are probably, you know, basically the two-headed monster of Mogul Embassy. That's, that's, beneath, that's beneath Swerve's potential. Now, uh, uh, but I'm I'm just almost saying, no. should be champ. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to agree with him because now we see – what happened because he didn't. And now Swerve seems like he's on this upward echelon or whatever the case may be, upward climb. And, you know, A.R. Fox is, you know, basically dropped off where he was before this whole thing even started. So I'm inclined to agree. Swerve is the the beneficiary of A.R. Fox not having this passport. All right. Uh, so, yeah, um, at the very least, he would be involved in this continuing staying yep. edge all that kind of stuff which yep. is another high profile thing now he's just another guy uh but um yeah uh the acclaimed had a had a video and the only reason i'm mentioning it is because it was pretty entertaining because they've been doing the we've been x days trios champs and i was always wondering why they did that gimmick i'm like it's not very impressive right you're like ah we've been champs for 17 days right. like, <laughs> because they want to do 69 which is pretty funny uh, for their for their gimmick, it works pretty good. So next week there'll be a this week there will be a celebration of sixty nine days as champs, which is um, something that we can't say for the other trios. So uh, I mean, we'll I mean, really, like the acclaimed are the ones that should be called the ass boys. All they talk about, they should be called the sex team or something. All they talk about is scissoring and 69ing. Those boys are horny. <laughs> Poor Max. Dude, uh, uh, what's his name? Billy Gunn is 60. He is 60 years old. Still horny he's never as fuck. Grown up. Yeah. God bless him. Uh, he's got my fucking job. But, um, I, you know, I want to look like him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no shit. Uh, we had some enhancement stuff. Um, and, uh, we had a not so good Halloween match with Sheeta and Abaddon. Uh, good to see Abaddon back, but this was not very good. I don't think it was just because it was like a Halloween gimmick. It was just not a very good match. Um, this is WWE the shit. Crowd, ding, ding, yeah, ding, crowd ding, got ding, into ding. it. But it's, what's funny is like the crowd got into it whenever they did the pumpkin thing. That was the only thing the crowd liked about it. The rest yeah, of the match, no. they couldn't give a shit. So like, I almost can't blame the Halloween gimmick because that was the only thing the crowd liked uh so i almost blame the rest of the, the regular wrestling um a halloween match and big shows back god damn dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 2009 raw <laughs> i no, i said that on twitter i was just like you know good to see that uh I think as I said it on Monday, like Triple H is still doing sports entertainment because I was watching that Natty match and I was like, okay, fuck this. I'm going to feed the cats. And, you know, this is a perfect time to skip this shit. And everybody's like, oh, you know, th- that was that was still fun. I don't understand what your problem is. The like, difference, the motherfucker, the, the Vince difference, did it too. It's okay. The difference is Collision ended with a 30 minute classic between MJF and Kenny Omega. <laughs> and the, in the 2009, yeah. 2009 Raw was like, I don't know. Uh, uh, fill in the blank street fight where it, it had been. Yeah. This would have been the main event. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the Samoa Joe squash match. He squashed um, the champion who was champion two champions ago. Uh, but you never would have known unless they didn't tell you uh, because he just squashed the fuck Red out Titus. of him. Red Titus, damn it. Plus, what's so good? A little respect yeah. on the man's name. Shit. Yeah, it was Red Titus. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. It sure was. <laughs> but, uh, what was his name again? <laughs> we had an awesome, uh, awesome promo from Claudio, who is not known for promos, maybe just because he spent most of his time in WWE not really talking because they don't like accents um, until Becky Lynch. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, like uh, basically, you you hurt uh, one of mine. I'll hurt you, Orange Cassidy. So he had pinned Orange Cassidy. They were gonna they wrestled on Dynamite. Uh, but I mentioned it because Claudio is not normally known for his promos, and this was pretty good. Like, uh, just basically, I'm going to hurt you. It was uh, be... it was scary. I mean, yeah, it was like his, his it was promos. like, oh, he's like he looks like he's actually gonna he wants to whoop someone's ass. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he's kind of got that Samoa Joe thing where it's like you really don't want to like 
You know you're going to fucked up now, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know you're going to fucked up now, like right? That's, like, that's a grown man. Got, they have, yeah, that, yeah, that they NFA, have, uh, not they have, fucking around. <laughs> yeah. They have, uh, they have credibility, right? And Moxley's the same way. Um, Danielson is not. He's credible because he's, like, the best, like, pro wrestler. But, like, I never think he's serious about anything that he ever says. Like, I just feel like he's just lying all the time. <laughs> Which is just fine, uh, and, and it's fun. But those guys, I believe everything that they ever say. So. That is a that's mm, that's like a sneaky hot take. Right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. He stuck that shit in there. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me put my toe in there and see what these jokers say. You're talking, talking about, about shrapnel. You, you're talking about the American I mean, dragon. I know he's like he's like the best pro wrestler, but like I don't believe a word that he says. The thing is, like that's a hot take, and. I kind of get what he's saying. Like, he's not, it, he's, I mean, he's right. Like, when he's a heel, he's just not as authentic of a promo as Moxley, for sure. And He's good at saying what needs to be said as a heel to get reaction, but, like, I don't actually believe that he thinks that. That'd be funny to see Danielson, like, cutting a promo over Hangman's kid's crib. <laughs> like, just have it, just have it something, like, totally, like, what the fuck? <laughs> say, I thought Danielson Swerve needs to be on a list somewhere. Yeah, I was going to say, you thought Swerve was creepy. Danielson would be right on that list, too. Um, I'll just... I have more to say about Claudio later. This, this promo fucking rule though i'll just say this about the the hot take that uh three beers just threw out there i'll just bring out exhibit a uh danielson's promo calling out okada leading into their forbidden door match pretty straightforward if that's not believable enough fair enough but i i kind of get your point he's he's but i think that's the way he's been booked, especially in WWE, he's done babyface, he's done heel, and he's throwing a little bit of uh, comedy in between when he was like the Earth champion or whatever, and he didn't want it to have any, he, everything was recyclable. He was a heel, but he was a funny heel. So in that scenario, I get what you're saying. I just feel like he's a carny, right? Oh, uh, what? Yeah, like I uh, and and like an endearing way. Like I just think he's very pro wrestling. Um, like uh, he has credibility because he said the Sooner Bitten Door stuff, and like uh, he has credibility because when he says like I'm the best wrestler in the world, like that is very credible. But um, like I just always feel like a lot of the stuff that he's that he's saying, he's on the verge of laughing when he says it. Not that he actually the delivery is bad. Uh, it just doesn't seem serious. Um, I mean, me. I, I I get it. I get what he said. Yeah. Wow. Stud. Okay. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> this is going he's, nowhere. He's still, he's still on my Mount Rushmore. As I say, this, I this what, wheel is just going to be like. <laughs> I think that, have you guys ever seen, like, uh, almost every, um, and I'm not on social media nearly as much anymore, but, like, every time, like, Fightful would, like, post an article, they had, like, this image of Brian Danielson where he's, like, his head's kind of, like, tilted down, and he's, like, looking up at the camera, and he's got this, like, smirk on his face where basically he just, like, got done, like, uh, I don't know, like, talking about somebody's dick size or something. It's super <laughs> fucking weird and creepy. They call that and, the um, Shayna Baszler. Oh, oh! Oh, wait a minute. All right. That's how she always looks. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh, damn. Man. Sorry, but Shayna. You guys, but it's very, it's very funny. And it's just that smirk. Like, I just, yeah, anyway, I'll send it to you guys. And that's just what I imagine am all the time. But anyway, moving on. Uh, we did have Dax Harwood, who lost the match to Ricky Starks, which pretty much puts a uh, a pin in any FTR uh, rematches for the tag belt. Um, also, at the same time, I feel like the Bucks won. And correct me if I'm wrong. Did the Bucks not win a few weeks ago? Like some kind of four way situation where they became the number one contenders and then it's never been spoken of again. Yeah, that's never been mentioned, so I don't know what's going on with the tag titles. Uh, it's fine that I, I like Starks and Big Bill as champions, but I don't know. Um, I feel like this would have set up a rematch if Dax would have pinned them, but they're not going that direction. So um, I don't, feel like, I don't feel like Starks and Big Bill are going to be champs for very long. 
probably not. Um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of irons in the fire here with House of Black and LFI, and we'll see we'll see how that goes. Yeah, LFI um, baby faces. Last we saw them, they were kidnapping people in Mexico. <laughs> They were kidnapped there in their own group. Let's calm down, all right? Let's just chill out. Still. Let's just chill out. You're not allowed to kidnap anybody. <laughs> it wasn't even kidnapping. It, it was basically like, you know, uh, rally, uh, rush week or whatever. You know, jump these hoops. You'll be fucking fine at the end. You know, here's your L- LFI badge, all right? Let's not, you know, blow this thing out of proportion. It's not like it's People die w- during w- rush week. It's not, it's, it's not the NXT <laughs> parking lot, okay? Let's chill out. <laughs> That is the most dangerous place in America. <laughs> Not just because the ocean's going to swallow it pretty soon. But, oh, shit. Uh, uh, Learn to so, swim. <laughs> yeah. um, salt life. Uh, <laughs> uh, Claudio killed Tracy Williams. Um, MJF approached Samoa Joe. Uh, and... Uh, there was like a backstage segment with a uh, sky blue willow and Chris Statlander, uh, all just kind of like furthering some storylines. Uh, but really, the meat on the bone here that we can't leave off is this world championship main event. Uh, this was the best thing that I saw all week. This was a pay per view level match. I absolutely loved MJF versus Kenny Omega. Um, MJF is like definitely contender for wrestler of the year i mean will osprey is like he's the guy right like he's he's the guy that's having matches he's having every promotion's best match like every promotion that he's wrestled in he has had their best match that's fucking insane he's like the most outstanding wrestler of the year but mjf he's been champion for a long time he's having banger matches too in this match with kenny was phenomenal. It was a pay per view main event on a Saturday night with a couple with a couple commercial breaks, and uh, I'll be goddamned if it was not my favorite thing that I watched this week. So, a <clears throat> couple things here. We did a lot of complaining during the Adam Cole stuff that it was a little too comedy. You know, maybe not we, but I did, and other people did that. Maybe it was a little too comedy, and there wasn't enough emphasis being put on the heavyweight title. They've done a complete 180 on that. The heavyweight title is the most important thing on AEW television, even as as compelling and as funny and as great as Christian is. MJF is the focal point of four hours of television a week. Um, at least he was this week. And um, he is carrying the company. Uh, I forgot the other thing I was going to say. Jason, what do you think? Obviously, it was a, <clears throat> a must-see match. I won't say must-see, but the build, as short as it was, it's basically, you know, rubber meets the road, the streak of one man versus the all-time streak of another, and they basically rolled the ball out and let them do their thing. Um, the spot where Kenny did a power bomb on MJF through the table definitely made me pop, and that was just the first of many big spots throughout the show or at least throughout the match um i always say that i need the match to be more if it's going to be predictable then it needs to be better than the predictability of the match itself this blew me out of the water it's easily on the list of match of the year as far as i'm concerned um MJF as, you know, wrestler of the year, he's definitely got to be on the list. And that's crazy to think when this whole uh, title reign even started, you know, we were talking about him in, in, the, in the same vein as Roman Reigns. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's one of the guys that is going to be there at the end. So this was the other thing I was going to say was that when when he was doing his heel work, we were like, man, when he eventually flips babyface, he is going to be so over. And we were so right. He is fucking so over as a babyface. It's kind of remarkable, and it makes sense that uh, he is the focal point of the show. That being said, Jay White should win, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, what else you got, Zach? Uh, that's it for collision, um, but um, I'll agree that 
you know, making a face. I've, Jason's making a face. Hold on a sec- second, Zach. I'm sorry. What kind of face are you making? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the Jay White should win thing, man. Oh, okay. All right. All right, Zach. What's oh, next? yeah. I don't agree that Jay White should win, but I agree that the AW title feels like the most important thing because oh, yeah. no question. there's so many people vying for it. No question. Baby face. Like, baby face that over should be in chase mode. That's all I'm saying. Makes more sense if he's in chase mode. But I do like that he's, like, fighting all comers and that, like, he's the baby face in peril because everybody wants a piece of him. I love the Wardlow yeah. shit. And historically, the the pinnacles of wrestling promotions, like, the highest of highs for wrestling promotions or whatever, they have a strong baby face champion. So I think they ride this thing for a little while longer. There's that businessman. He's that the Fortune 500 Zach out there, man. Okay. He always knows. <laughs> he knows the business side Hold better on. than any of us. Hey, Hulk Hogan is on my Mount Rushmore, you know, and people always give me shit about it, but that's how WWE really became, or WWF became, really became WWF. They did it off the Hulk Hogan's back. I'm just saying, three beer, Zach, Fortune 500, Zach. <laughs> F5, Zach. F5Z. That doesn't roll off the top. We got we'll, to work with it. We'll figure something out. I'm like a full-on leftist. Um, <laughs> But uh, VFZ. Did, uh... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. 5FZ. 5FZ. No, it's just, it's just going gonna, gonna to happen. We, you know, we, right. we, we, we can't force Southern, everybody. To get... Something about him being the money man. Right, yeah. It's just, you know, we can't force everybody to, to dunk. It's just going to happen. You know, the trick dunk is going to happen. It's just going to roll off the tongue. The million dollar man, Zach Diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> but, uh, we had uh, Dynamite uh, opened up with an awesome title match. Uh, Orange Cassidy beating Claudio Castagnoli. You would have thought these guys would have wrestled in the past. Uh, they're both Shikara dudes, but apparently not. And holy shit, if this wasn't super fun, uh, which is exactly what you would expect. Claudio, you know, throwing Orange around. Orange being the small dude, uh, you know, kind of flipping around him as a base. Just excellent big man, little man stuff. Um, yep. This was a super fun opener, and uh, OC retains. Uh, once again, not a huge surprise. Um, yeah, you're building Cassidy up, but you know, obviously, you're building him up for one reason, and that reason came out and just beat that motherfucker like he stole something. I'm like, God damn! You know, Cardi over on the side, you know, still pissed off about the loss. Uh, when you texted me, I just went to sleep. And, um, Vice texted me. He was like, "Is Cardio going face?" I was like, th- "I was like, no way." And, you know, he's salty. A, but then B, he looks over and sees Moxley. He's like, "Okay, motherfucker, you know, you you whooping this dude. All right, enough's enough. Let's co- let me pull you off of it before you commit capital murder on national I, TV." I sensed a little bit of Claudio not really appreciating Moxley being there. Really, that's what I sensed. Even though Moxley, even though Claudio's whole thing beforehand was, you know, we take care of our own or we defend our brothers. Or whatever, I don't know. Um, I, I was watching. I was like, man, Claudio should win this motherfucker. Like, this is the you you were. There's no way you weren't going to get once Orange Cassidy won. You knew, you knew they were going right back, or not even right back, but at some point we were going to get Cassidy Mox too because the first one was so good. It was inevitable. The question was, when were they going to do it? They just went back to it right away. Fair enough. I ain't mad. But there, you knew this week we were going to get there at some point. Yeah, but I think Claudio was looking at him too like, can I Can I have my chance? Like, can I win? Can I win? Do I need to do this with you all the time? Okay, okay. Here's my retort on that. You had your chance. It's not like Moxley came out and there was fuckery and the fuckery went left. He just got rolled up. It happens. One, two, three. It's not like this, it's the first time the Orange has done that to somebody. Now, from that point, okay, now, from that point, the beatdown, okay. If we're going, if he's going to get mad about, you know, Moxley's coming right in and, you know, basically I'm going to get the rematch that I want, Okay, maybe you get something on that. But it's not like he didn't get a straight-up shot. Where were you to, and a little brother and uh, Hook got thrown out? So, I mean, there was nobody out there to fuck with it, and he lost. That's it. 
I love Claudio. I love him. At I, think some the refer- point- I think the referee just knew their IDs were fake. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yep, no. You Sorry, guys. Yeah, you guys are out. Yeah, like, you had a good run. You got in for a little bit, but it's time to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm, I know your cousin. He's an asshole. Yeah. Go ahead and get out of here. You're out of here. <laughs> Peace out. Uh, uh, what's the whole, next? The whole story of this episode was basically MJF needs to find three partners for Bullet Club Gold main event. And um, there was a variety of uh, interactions. He knocks on Kenny's door. He just had that knockdown drag out uh, title match. But he's like, oh, oh, shit. He's like, I'll, I'll like, you know, eat some crow and I'll, I'll knock on Kenny's door. Jericho answers, basically tells him to fuck off, slams the door in his face. Pretty fun because of their history. Uh, I enjoyed that. Max, Caster, and the acclaimed are right outside. And that is kind of the motif of the entire episode is that the acclaimed are following him around and he's refusing to do it. Uh, he gets attacked by Wardlow. Uh, he breaks his clipboard. He talks to, he talks to Adam Cole, uh, on FaceTime and the kingdom come up and offer their services. And Adam Cole tells him to, you know, take some of Joe's offer. Uh, he doesn't even ask, but he uh, thinks in his head that maybe he'll do the traveling carnival of, uh, the Jeff Jarrett, uh, group, but uh, it ends up finally being uh, the acclaimed, as we will see. But that was like the whole story of this match. So there's a lot of people gunning for MJF, which is cool uh, because he's the world champion and everybody should be gunning for him. Uh, that is how it should be. Whereas before, Max would make people jump through hoops and he's like, I'm not wrestling. Now he's a double champion fighting contenders on all sides and he's defending the ROH titles alone. Uh, it's a fun uh, flip flop uh, from his previous character. Yeah, and I love the Wardlow thing. Um, I thought it was strange that when they shot it, they shot it. You just saw MJF's face the entire time instead of Wardlow's because Wardlow was mean. But yeah, I mean, I completely agree. Uh, this segment was fine. I this acclaim thing, I just don't. I just do not fucking get it. But yeah, it's kind of like a long build to just kind of pop. A crowd, I feel like. Um, At the very end. Just, yeah. And uh, I feel like the acclaimed are they're, they're just a perfect house show act. Uh, they're not, Man, they are kind of over. That's what I was but, just going to say. It's like that ending, though, where they all scissored. That's what's supposed to happen after the show goes off the air. Off camera. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, that's how you're going to end it with your baby face champion just kind of being okay with the loss and. Scissoring? I don't know, Jason. What After you think? a sixty-year-old man screams in your face, it's that you're gonna scissor him right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, well, okay, and it's it. <laughs> forgot about that. That's right. Billy Gunn was pissed. <laughs> that was non-consensual scissoring. Got him. Got Dude, him. Me and me and Timber of Hall just had a talk about a girl we met online that has that same kink. I just, I just had, uh, I just had a uh, a, a true spit take, a true spit take. <laughs> Once you said that line, he just literally turned to his left to spit this beer out. I was like, yes, finally, it's not just me. Um, in in Billy's defense, and I don't, I don't even know why I'm gonna do this, but. I get why Billy was pissed. Max Caster took the bullet for him, okay? When push came to Sheriff, Max told Max Caster showed MJF, you know, that's... Max Caster's a grown man. He made that decision. Look, okay, I'm not disagreeing with that, okay? But you just can't, you can't just walk away, man. Just do the scissor and let's move along, all right? You crying about fucking Adam Cole, baby. Being, you know, being your best friend and you finally learning the meaning of friendship is like the Grinch, you know, finally waking the fuck up. Max Caster took the bullet for him. Just scissor him and move the fuck along. I mean, that sounds pretty non-consensual. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of Swipe promos, right. <laughs> Moxley, <laughs> Moxley cut a very scary promo on Orange Cassidy. Um, I would be scared. I was Orange Cassidy. That's your ass, uh, Mr. Postman. <laughs> he said, I'm just not Mox- doing very well. This might not even be your fault. 
<laughs> Dude, that's that's one of the most scary things that you could even say. I know. <laughs> like, oh shit! <laughs> it's also you get kind of worried for him. You're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fuck. Whole box is all right. <laughs> I'll say, fuck exactly. him. The only thing I'll say about this that that promo plus the little added aggression in OC when push comes to shove. It's going to make round two real, real interested. I was interested the first time. I'm even more interested the second time. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be uh, – a gr- like full gear is going to be dope uh, between MJF and Jay White in that match and then anything else that we have coming down the pike. That's going to be dope. Um, and then we had kind of a baffling situation. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they just did this because they had the whole idea to turn – the Young Bucks heel. Uh, but I was talking last week about how, like, oh, yeah, you have this ROH, these ROH belts. You've got this streaming service. Like, yeah, let's put our biggest stars on it. Let's make them champions. That kind of makes sense, like, from a business perspective. And then they just lose this week to the same people that just had the belt. Um, and maybe they did it to begin this heel turn because the Bucks, they think the Bucks should be heels or whatever. But this just seems like um, – it doesn't seem like there was a huge plan for this. It just seemed like something that happened. It was a short match. It wasn't advertised. And it was just like, it seemed kind of shotgunning. I don't know. Very confused. I took this as one of, well, I'll just start with the match itself. Um, Swerve coming out, obviously, was what had to happen after last week's uh, home invasion. That said, um, Hangman running up the ramp, basically opens the door for the Bucks to interpret that any way they, they choose. In kayfabe style, I'm not mad at the Bucks for, you know, how they reacted post-match. Why are we going to get the elite back together and the elite's not taking care of the elite? Chris Jericho, of all people on the coming from the outside in, is basically, you know, the first choice before the Bucks are, before Kenny is, before Kota, Kota Bushi is, you know, the guy that's coming before the Bucks are. So at that point, I ain't mad at the Bucks. Okay, they went out there with a, with a Hangman, and then basically, quote unquote, left out to dry at the end of the day. To me, you already said it beforehand. This goes back to that uh, Fatal Four with they that they won at Wrestle Dream, if I'm not mistaken that hasn't come back to pass, that hasn't been even brought back up. So now it's the fork in the road with that storyline. Either you need to bring that shit back up or, you know, bury that motherfucker somewhere and pretending like it never happened. I don't know what you need to do. Me bring that shit up it would probably be the best bet. That way, Starks and Bill can get over as a tag team. If you have them go over, great. If not, no big deal. Um, it's a good thing that Gates of Agony and Brian Cage are now the – Trios champions. Yes. That's a good thing. So I, that, I said that last if week. If you're going to do it as a story, if if it's furthering a Buck story, that's fine. But It's more so furthering Swerve versus Page. That's fine. Just get the belts off him. D- yeah. I yeah, agree so with you. Know, that's so- I'm sorry, cool Three it. Beer. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Your boys are no, all great. Fine. Your uh, boys are super right. over. Have them win the tag team belts. Zach doesn't or- care if they win. Look, I know. I was just thinking of some rationale for it. Like, I wasn't, like, for it or against it, really. I was just like, oh, well, it's not the end of the world. Um, I can understand why they did it. Now it kind of doesn't make any sense why they did it, why they lost in the first place. But we'll see. Maybe it'll play out. But, uh, I why, mean, who lost it's in the definitely first place? better for the Mogul Embassy. I'm really into that group. They're really they're really talented. You're talking about why the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage lost in the first place? Yeah, yeah. No, that gates of agony are cool. No, I I totally agree, and I think it's a way to get them over long term. So in that scenario, I agree with you. I never understood. Listen why to they your lost. friends, gates of agony. They're cool dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I want them motherfuckers looking at me. We if hey if we dunking on them, I'm just gonna be the you know I'm gonna be the Trey Young of this shit. Trying I'm just throwing that shit up. up. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm gonna be Dwayne Wade. I'm just gonna be on you know afterwards you know have my hands out like ah. You know that part in Zoolander where Billy Zane's trying to talk Zoolander out of the walk-off? <laughs> <laughs> Can it, Zane? And Owen Wilson goes, I, listen to your friend Billy Zane. 
He's a cool dude. Excuse He's trying to help you totally, out. He's trying to help you out. I, I totally got that reference. Uh, okay, good, good, <laughs> good. So, I love that movie. God damn, Zoolander is so fucking good. Uh, what's next? Um, so we are going to get Adam Copeland, Sting, and Darby Allen versus Christian Cage. Uh, what is it? It's in the um, Christian Cage. Uh, Ruby Riot. Not Ruby Riot. Oh, <laughs> Nick Wayne. <laughs> yeah, Nick Wayne and uh, Luchasaurus. Luchasaurus yeah. is the guy. I think of. It yeah. worked, didn't it? <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, so we are going to get that. Uh, so we had, um, you know, Copeland came out and Christian interrupted, and this was like decently entertaining. Not, not the most cutting Christian commentary. Uh, that we've had so far, but uh, we did finally get the situation. So it's on the books. It's another uh, match that I'm looking forward to full gear for. But um, yeah, it kind of ended in some some uh, some roughness. But uh, yeah, uh, crowd was pretty be... dead during this segment. Like deader than they yeah. were for the whole rest of the night. It was kind of weird. It was like maybe they had a mic weird or something. I don't know. Now nah, th- this is the part where you were saying that. Dynamite was paint by numbers. This was a paint by numbers segment. You know, Copeland came out. Christian came out. Christian does what he does. Makes me giggle. Baby faces come out to make the save. Edge is like, can we get our truth to come out and say some funny <laughs> stuff? And they're like, no, dude, you're not in WWE anymore. He's like, oh, okay, well, it, it was WWE shit. So, in that scenario, it, it was paint by numbers. But ultimately, we, you know, the match that you thought we were going to get, we got. So, the spear by Copeland yeah. on a uh, Christian, fine. You know, the only reason the- I'm going to bring up, oh, go ahead. No, I was like, ultimately, we just move along with that. Yeah, the only thing, only reason I'm going to bring up Tony Khan's big announcement is because it was not a very big announcement, and I'm At tired all. of seeing Tony Khan's big announcement every single week. He's uh, he's it, he's in on it now, right? Like he's doing this to be funny, right? I hope so. Like it's a meme. Yeah, I, that's what I think it is now. Like, because he was really playing up the smiles this time. He was, like, playing a character. I'll be honest. Once I heard what it was, I'd stop paying attention. I'd, I'd let him talk, and, you know, but him and Nigel, God bless him. Nigel McGinnis, by the way, I think is one of the best commentators in all professional wrestling. I, I watch a ton of the shit, obviously. He's, he's so good on Collision. And Whew. you know who's really bad on Collision, which is baffling to me? Kevin Kelly. Uh Kevin Kelly fucking sucks. Hey, he's whoa, not whoa, good. Whoa, whoa, he was whoa. so good in New Japan. Hang, hang on, he is man. not good. Hang on, man. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on, man. I'm it is totally it. different. Hang on, man. But hang Zach on. is right. Hang on. Whoa, hang on, man. Hang on. Okay. You, you dunking on Kevin Kelly ain't cool. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that shit right now. Listen. We are journalists. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, y'all are journalists. Are I'm the fan. <laughs> speaking an objective truth. <laughs> you know, I loved him in New Japan. He would even be alone a lot of times, and he would do an admiral job, which is crazy hard. It was kind of better. Uh, but I kind of loved his one-man yeah. booth, his Bob yeah. Uber. Okay, so, I just, uh, so you're dealing with three guys, just, so let's just, you know, let's take it easy on this shit, all right? I'm going to let this Kevin I'll, Kelly dunk go, but let's not make this shit no habit. Dude, I'd almost rather have JR anymore. Whoa, yeah. what the, whoa, 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 on, whoa. hang on, man. Zach, 5'8", 250 pounds. <laughs> Big fan of Monday Night Raw. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, uh, it's definitely a thing. And maybe it's because he just wasn't watching the product and he was so ingrained in the New Japan stuff, and he lived there, and he was with the guys all the time, and maybe he, he just seems removed from it, and I don't know. We'll see. But uh, uh, I do enjoy the tag team of Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. That's pretty fun. The name is pretty fun, the Golden Jets. They're both Winnipeg dudes. Uh, that is just a natural thing. Like, they were these adversaries. Like, they pretty much brought the – uh, New Japan World to the height, the highest of its heights, and they were the first rivals for the AEW World Championship. And the fact that they're tagging now is just makes sense. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's a neat thing. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I'm into it. Honestly, I was, 
I wasn't really a big fan of it until you just talked me into it. Okay, fair enough. I, I'm i still trying to adjust to it not being a one-time thing. I'm like, oh, this is actually going to be a thing. So, I think it's a thing as long as Don Callis' family is a thing, at least. that, And that is where the elite tension, I guess, for lack of a better term, is, is uh, coming into play. Chris Jericho is not uh, necessarily a big fan of the elite and vice versa, and now he's in where you have other guys. Hangman is fucking with Swerve. Bucks take the L. You know, Kota Ibushi dumps, jumps in and out. Um, it's an interesting secondary storyline, I'll say that. Yeah, and then uh, we had two more matches. Uh, we had Sheeta versus Little Nightingale, where the main story is that it seems that Blue or Sky Blue and Willow Nightingale have not been fully affected by the mist, and they are not going to be heels, which is good for Willow. Probably okay for Sky Blue too, as uh, Sky Blue blows Blue Mist into Julia Hart's face. Um, so that's been something that's been kind of um, worrying me because Willow Nightingale is probably the most over women's baby face on the roster as far as like crowd reactions the turning for a heel would be monumentally stupid uh sky blue probably could have gone either way but um cheetah beater uh and uh then we had the main event which was uh a house show main event bullet club but it furthers the storyline and also the finish oh chef's kiss on the finish um mjf does all the you know the acclaim mjf they, all the baby face stuff the unlikely uh, partners and then MJF is not necessarily distracted, but he um, does. He is not paying attention after he does his comeback and he does the rope shake and he turns around right into uh, Jay White's finisher. What is the name of it? Somebody help me. Blade Runner. Blade Runner, right into a Blade Runner for the one, two, three. Uh, Challenger pinning the champion clean in the middle of the ring before the big title match, putting over Jay White, putting over his finish. And then still sending the crowd home happy with the scissoring. So I thought it was a pretty well done TV main event. Yeah, it was it was okay. Um, I thought the right thing happened, uh, although it does kind of make me question whether or not Jay White actually has a chance. And I'm not sure that he does, even though I think that. Uh, well, I'm on record. But anyway, yeah, it, it was. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say that. No, 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 don't back down now, motherfucker. You. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I think that he should. I just don't think that he will. Um, but yeah, this was cool. I'm glad Jay White won. It was the visual of seeing Jay White pinning MJF, and I think that's what uh, this ultimately boils down to. At least giving those who don't know Jay White, those who aren't Jay White fans, reasonable doubt to think that Jay White could beat MJF for the title. Um, the match wasn't what, what it was, what it was. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was probably somewhere in the gray. Um, I'm wait, waiting for the acclaim to just, you know, drop these trio styles and, you know, go after the, uh, the AEW tag tiles, but that's another story for another time. The ass boys. Um, no, yeah. they they were on uh, they were on collision. So on, uh, that actually, I, I think they should, you know, they should be, you know, the ones with the. When is full gear? It is the eighteenth of November. Yeah, baby. Come Whew. on, Scorpio season. Yeah, baby. man. I say we kicking the dough right wave in, in between the fo -fo. our birthdays. All you'd heard was BFR. Don't hit me no mo. That's right in between our birthdays. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> uh, anything else we got for AEW? Think that's it. All right, let's get to that three count. One, two, three. So it was Halloween Havoc night two uh, this week, and we ended with. Uh, I know that Zach probably didn't get a chance to watch it, so I'll go over the highlights. But Carmelo Hayes versus Ilya Dragunov in the main event. Trick Williams, his music plays. That's right. <laughs> when Carmelo is on the top rope and Carmelo uh, stares at him like, what the fuck? I thought Carmelo was looking at him like, oh, shit, he's back, and he knows what I did. Like, Carmelo's the one that attacked him. Dragunov wins with his, I forget, what, what do they call that? Oh, uh, the, um, the something hammer or the 
the forearm or whatever. I've heard it called the CTE trigger, which I think is a fucked up name. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would definitely say that's probably but not the name of the finish. He wins with that. And then when it goes, when it, uh, as it's going off the air, Baron Corbin has already attacked Ilya Dragunov backstage, saying, I told you to keep your head on a swivel. So we got Trick and Carmelo in the ring. Did Baron he? Corbin attacks. Ilya, oh, yeah, we don't know if Baron Corbin actually attacked Ilya Dragunov. Did he? Also on NXT, Lexus King says, wait till you see what I do or till you find out what I already did. So Lexus King might be the one out back there beating dudes up. Uh, what would you think about this, Jason? Um, Dragunov, Carmelo 3, you know, just go see it if you haven't get, get a chance to see that. I would just put that there. The post match stuff was all the the intrigue that I like to see in wrestling itself. Way I interpreted Melo was, oh, tricks back. How are you okay? How how the fuck are you just now coming back? You know, he obviously he came out of nowhere. I think that now Lexus King is the one that attacks Trick Williams just for the simple fact of what he said at the end of his promo. Okay, thank you. So now I'm just going to be simple about this thing. I think Baron Corbin did get Ilya Dragon off backstage waiting for his ass after a long ass knockdown drag out match with Melo. That was probably the most physical of the three matches that they had. Melo came out swinging right from the jump. Dragunov came back, and they basically was just throwing bombs from that point on. But I'm thinking Lexus King is the guy that attacked Trick. Corbin is waiting for uh, Ilya Dragunov, but all of this is probably coming for not because the uh, – I can't even remember what the uh, Iron Survivor uh, match was last year. I think the champion's involved, so Corbin is going to be involved in that too. So it's probably Corbin, Dragunov, and three – other people involved in this nonsense. Corbin, I think, is going to have to qualify to get into that, so he's going to have to bitch about that. But ultimately, I don't think you're going to get a one-on-one -on -one match with – well, you know you know he is. You know he is. The whole thing – Always bitching. Okay, and God bless him for it. This, this time he might have a little bit of a beef. He's the last guy to pin Dragon off. Okay, fair enough. You should have a one-on-one -on -one match. This Iron Survivor uh, match, I think, is going to have him – Dragging off and multiple other dudes all wrestling for the title. Zach, did you get a chance to watch any of this? No, but that's funny that he was also the last guy to pin Roman Reigns, and he was bitching about that too. <laughs> <laughs> also, the <laughs> he's also the last guy to pin Kurt Angle. Uh, uh, hey man, hey, hey, hey! Just saying. How you dunking on Kurt Angle? That's not a dunk. It happened. It's fact. He beat Kurt Angle. He retired him. The show opened with the Everybody Creed versus strays. <laughs> strays every fucking <laughs> right. word on BFR. God damn! The show opened with the Creeds versus Los Lotharios in a tables, ladders, and ain't Los Lotharios match. anymore, man. They just they just Garza, Angel Garza and yeah, Carrillo. Yeah, yeah, man. We nah, we, we, they're we, Los, Los Lotharios is a great name. Uh, this was a no tables, more. ladders, and scares match. <laughs> But it was uh, just really just a pretty rough match between these two. This was a this was a ton a ton of fun. Yeah, this is, it was a nice way to open the show. Hate the table ladders and scares part, but the physical match itself was physical as fuck. Four, there, four really fun wrestlers. Yeah, it was a couple of uh, cringy moments, but the the finish, the Brutus bomb through the tables, perfect way for as far as I'm concerned, the creeds to kind of wave bye-bye to the NXT universe and go up to the main roster. The only other thing of note that I can think of that happened was uh, Dominic Mysterio defends, successfully defends his North American title West against Nathan Frazier. Wesley makes his return and attacks Dom afterwards. So we're going to get Dom versus Wesley. Is Dom going to lose his title to Wesley? Zach, what do you think? <laughs> no, I can't say it. <laughs> I can't say yes. Um, I mean, that's tough. Um, I think there's a strong maybe there. I think we're looking 60, 40, at. Yeah. I think we're looking at a shakeup in Judgment Day. I think some stuff's going to happen, so they don't need the North American title. Well, you know, we'll see. I'm not saying I disagree with you with a shakeup, but I'm just I'm a Dom guy. We, it's it's on record. I can't sit up here. Just a straight up Dom guy now. I do. 
I was a dive guy before he was even North American champion. Once he flipped heel and ju- joined Judgment Day, that Joker was a wrap. Okay, WrestleMania. May I remind you of his WrestleMania entrance? How we all kind of was like, oh, shit. That's his, like, you know, basically his, you know, step into the world moment. I'm not Ray's son anymore. Motherfucker, respect my name type shit. Yeah, I'm a Dom guy. He's been a Dom guy since the custody match. (laughs) And he's supposed to win, damn it. Uh, so, uh, that's it for NXT this week. That's going to do it for our three count. One, two, three. JJ did Twig's Pizza on him. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hang on, man. No, no, no. We don't do that anymore. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Just hitting buttons now. That's great. <laughs> Trying to be funny. <laughs> Fucked up the joke. No, no, I was saying, you know, it, it's that uh, Jordan Poole jump shot from the corner or whatever. You shoot it, you look over at the corner, already talking shit. That <laughs> even close. Really bad. Hey, Zach, we haven't even let a pre roll yet. <laughs> uh, so we got predictions. We got our crown jewel predictions. There are eight matches on this card. This card is this happening this Saturday in the Spark afternoon. So in so right now the points are Zach has eighty nine. He's in the lead. JCB's got eighty six in second. And bring up the rear after the rare over. <laughs> and first time in beefer history. <laughs> Phil Beggy's in last place with seventy seven points. So we'll let we'll let the guy in the lead go first. That's so right, goddammit. Starting up, we have Sami Zayn versus JD McDonough in a match just. Hold got the fuck added. up! <laughs> Let me get this match first. I'm joking. Go Zach, ahead. Zach, who you got? Uh, this is like a pre-show match, right? Yeah, pre-show. It's also weird that uh, Sammy. This is the first time Sammy's in Saudi Arabia. Uh, is no. I thought he, I thought he was there last year. Maybe he was there last year. I thought he was there last year. If I'm not mistaken, I, I'm pretty sure he was, but I'm not 100 percent ready to commit on that. I would absolutely love to say Sammy Zayn because he's one of my favorite wrestlers. But uh, they just love to beat Sami Zayn. Uh, I'm going to pick J.D. McDonough. What? I got points to burn. Oh. To, oh. <laughs> points <laughs> points are being J. moved. McDonough. He heard him. Dude, he points it. are being moved here. <laughs> he points are being it. moved Wait here. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He He's heard it. He heard it. It's Zach. witness. He picked J.D. McDonough over Sami Zayn. Zach. He's got the wit. No, he is the witness to it. I got to hear him no. say it. Zach, who are you taking? Uh, reluctantly, J.D. McDonough. Thank you. Really? Okay, what's the reasoning behind that, if you don't mind me asking? I'm sorry if you already explained it. They just, I mean, Sami Zayn is one of my favorite wrestlers. They love to beat him. He gets beat by everybody. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, it's just kind of kind of further the Judgment Day thing at his expense. Jason, I'm guessing you're taking Sami Zayn. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to either drop a point or, or take a point back, but I'm going to go ahead and stick to my guns on this motherfucker here. Yeah, I'm taking Sami Zayn too. I can't. <laughs> if Judgment Day is going south. Shouldn't J.D. McDonough, as the mascot of Judgment Day at How this point, take Sammy, an LT? Wait, I thought Sami Zayn didn't go to Saudi Arabia. I thought he went last year. I don't remember if he went. But listen, they're not flying his ass over there reluctantly. And taking him, an L. For him to lose. No, he's winning. He's winning. Sami Zayn wins in Saudi Arabia. It's probably in his contract. Man, shit. It's about to say, you fly my ass over there, and I'm going to go, man, look, that's going to be a long flight well, he back. He sure shit doesn't have win in Montreal with his contract. <laughs> Hey, man, let it go, dog. It's over. <laughs> man, there's a bunch of big matches on this card. I WrestleMania know, 2.0. I, I don't know where to go oh, next. I'm sorry, 39 Let's go to John Cena versus Solo Sokoa. Jason, <laughs> you're up first. Who you got? Um, I, fuck it. Nah, I'm going to take Solo on this one, man. There's no reason for Solo to lose this shit. If he does, then, you know, it's the third guy that he's lost to that actually has some cachet. 
I'm just going to go ahead and say that John Cena has to lose because there's no reason for him to win. I'm taking Solo Sokoa. Uh, I'll go next. I am torn on this because why would John Cena come out and tell that sob story about not winning in forever and then still lose? Because he's supposed to, bitch. <laughs> Take the L. I you, know, you, know, you know how this rolls, man. You've been, you've been on top for 20 years, man. It's time for you to start taking some L's. I am not taking Solo Sokoa. I am taking John Cena <laughs> here. Just yes. talk. I love it. Yes. Just talk he myself into it. He just keeps giving points it. back. <laughs> he gives them back. Zach gives it to him, and he gives them right I just, back. I just talked myself into it. I'm taking John Cena. Zach Pullman, who do you have? Yes. Uh, Jason is going to run out of breath because he's going to keep laughing. Uh, because I feel the same way as Phil. Um, I just don't see Cena losing. Uh, Solo, you know, doesn't lose much, but he can lose to John Cena. Uh, it just seems weird that Cena would have this big top story. And also, like, I don't know, it's a, they are, like, big shows, but they have kind of a house show feel. And, like, Cena should win in Saudi Arabia. I don't know. He should, he should put young guys over, but, like, I don't know. It didn't work for Austin Theory. <laughs> so. Oh, damn. <laughs> Cena don't lose, man. Look, if Cena wins, like I said, that would be the third. It's what Cody, Cena. I can't think of the third guy that uh, that be so. All guys that are legitimately, um, guys that you would expect to see solo lose to. I just no, I can't. I just refuse to do it. He, I'm not All saying right. he's got to win, but he really, 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 really should win. All right. Uh, for the Women's Heavyweight Championship, I think I think the SmackDown one, yeah. EO Sky versus Bianca Belair. I will go first here. I don't bet against Bianca Belair just the same way I don't bet against Cena. I am taking Bianca Belair here to win the championship from EO Sky. Zach, who do you got? I don't think they're done with the EO story yet. I think there's more to come with Bailey, so I'm going to take EO. Jason, let's see. We're not all the. So we usually agree a lot. We are a little all over the place here tonight. Jason, who you got? Well, he started it with the whole JD McDonough thing. I was about to say that that's a layup, and all of a sudden, this motherfucker like, nah, I'm gonna go ahead and just do some LeBron shit. I'm gonna go, bounce it off the backboard and dunk it my damn self. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in between the legs and shit. Uh, Bianca coming back is. It, it feels like she should be champ, but I'm, I agree with Tubier on this one. The EO Sky reign has been disappointing at best. There needs to be a win where damage control is not involved and she gets a flat-out clean dub. This reign is screaming for it at this point. She deserves better than the booking that she has. Hopefully this is the chance to do it. I'm taking EO Sky. I think the direction, they've kind of lost the direction on the women's side and Bianca Belair. On this side of the fence. I agree with you. Uh, we have Rey Mysterio versus Logan Paul for the U.S. title. Zach, you're up first. Who you got? You know what? Um, this is another one that might uh, you guys might laugh at. I don't know. But Logan Paul as U.S. champ, I love it. So I'm picking it. Jay I haven't thought about it. I just love it. Jason, who do you got? I can't say that I totally disagree with that, just on the sense where once I saw KO and Logan Paul cross paths, I was like, oh, okay. Huh. Then my, my thoughts was like, well, damn. If Logan Paul wins the U.S. championship, that's an easy – you've just made a, a nice, easy – you set up right there, ready to go. I'll just say this, and you threw me this, Vice threw me this uh, on a, a, on our uh, text thread or whatever. Dom Mysterio has wrestled six matches in the last over the past seven days over two continents. Okay, that's some shit. That means you're over. Dare I say, way the fuck over. People want to see you and boo the fuck out of your ass. I'm taking Dom Mysterio. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying I'm taking. Um, you just started talking about Dom. I know. You switched from Ray to I know, Dom. I know. I, I tripped. I just now tripped off of it. 
Um, We're talking about Ray I know, versus I know, Logan Paul. I know, I know. JCB is getting old. D- fuck both you <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> hey, in his defense, we did like the pre-roll. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that makes more sense. Damn, who do I want to take? I'll take Logan Paul. No, I'll take Logan Paul. This is more, much more easier than I anticipated. Um, yeah, it's a clean sweep. Uh, what does Rey Mysterio need the U.S. title for? I mean, he's a legend. He's already in the Hall of Fame. No, Logan Paul needs it way more. Logan Paul versus KO for the U.S. title? That is a fucking match. Yeah, it, like I said, Ari set it up, too. It's, it, it almost writes itself. All right, we have for the Raw Women's Championship a fatal five-way uh, Rhea Ripley, Shayna Baszler, Nia Jax, Zoe Stark, and Ra- Raquel Rodriguez. JCB, who you got? Um, least to most, let's go Zoe Stark, probably dead last. I've been tooting her horn, but clearly not going to be the case. Um, Shayna Baszler would we'll throw her in next. Um, thought there would be a push, no such luck. Um, who am I, who's the other chick? Um, not Nia, not Rhea. Rodriguez. Let's go her third. Once, okay, so that's kind of my point. You know, she's big as as they come, and you know, she's basically in this mix of you know, basically no chance. I'm just being nice and throwing her third. Um, Nia versus uh, Rhea. I'll go Nia to. I'll go Rhea Ripley to retain. All right. I have Ripley to retain. Also, I have Nia Jax second most likely to win. I have Shayna Baszler third, Raquel Rodriguez fourth, and Zoe Stark last. Uh, Zach, who you got? I'm going to go uh, most the least, because uh, that makes sense for me here. Uh, most likely, Rhea Ripley. Uh, then I will go with uh, Raquel Rodriguez. Oh, uh, wow. Nia Jax. Yeah, that's just a thing that... I don't know. It just feels like a maybe. Uh, but, like, uh, more more maybe than the rest of them. Then Nia Jax, uh, then Shayna Baszler, and then Zoe Stark. Hang on. I want to... So, Nia Jax has been the focus of just running roughshod. I mean, I don't get it personally. I mean, it, for me, it's one of two people. Raquel Rodriguez is there to pose a second threat to Nia Jax and the Rhea Ripley. I don't think they pulled the trigger like that. I mean, something. if that happens, then Rhea Ripley's not a part of the pin. I'll go that far. I don't think they uh, are going to take it off Ripley at all. Uh, but if I'm, like, picking a number two, I'm just kind of going for maybe a little bit less of a or a little bit more of a swerve um, if they are taking it off. Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it, it, the it's WWE man, we can't do that. That's copyright infringement. <laughs> for the <laughs> championship match, uh, the heavyweight championship, we have Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre. Actually, let's come back to this one. Let's do Cody versus Damian Priest first. Uh, for this one, who you got, Jason? Cody Rhodes. Uh, Zach, who you got? Uh, Cody Rhodes, for sure. Yep, I'm taking Cody Rhodes. Also. Um, because sometimes you lose earlier in the night and then you cash in later. So next up, we have Seth Rollins versus Drew McIntyre for the belt. Uh, I guess it's my turn to go first here. I don't see McIntyre winning. I am taking Seth Rollins. He got Jason. Um, I think this is going to be one of the matches I'm really looking forward to. But ultimately, I will agree with you. I think Seth winning keeps Priest cash in and play. I think he would, even if Drew won for whatever reason, and I'm not saying it's beyond the realm of possibility because obviously I thought uh, the vignette on SmackDown with Drew telling his side of the story leading up to it makes a very compelling case. It would be more so of a reason for him to flip heel down the line, but neither here nor there just for this particular match. I can see Rhea Ripley coming out. I can see Matt, uh, Damian Priest coming out and just kind of waiting in the wings, but I think Seth wins ultimately. And, Zach, who you got? I think Seth wins this match, but I do think this is the time that Damian catches in. So I know there's no point in the line, uh, but that is my prediction. Is Seth? Yeah, yeah Seth, is, Seth wins, Damian catches in. Okay. 
And then last but not does least, he got his, does he do it successfully? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's pretty much where I'm at, too. Um, Roman Reigns versus LA Knight. Uh, Zach, you're up first. Stone Cold, Lead Pipe, Lock of the Week, Roman Reigns. Jason, who you got? He stole my thunder and he stole my, you know, my fucking lead pipe lock of the week, too. It's got to be Roman Reigns at this point. See, now that could get me. I mean, can I go back and make something else my Stone Cold lead pipe lock, lock of the week? Would you make your what it was? I haven't said you? it yet. But okay, like, so I'm, I'm I'm losing by points though. You like, don't get you don't gain me. points for for this. You're risking losing points for this. All right. So if you want to do it, by Roman all means. Reigns, I'm taking Roman Reigns, Stone Cold lead pipe lock of the week because there's no way LA Knight's winning this. I mean, it's just there's no way no they're way. doing it. No. Um, so those are our predictions. Uh, we will check back with you next week. And let you know how we did. <laughs> yeah, somebody gonna be mad at the motherfucker next week. <laughs> somebody gonna be mad at the motherfucker next week. I promise. Well, I you. gotta wait for the music to play out so I can finish up my segment. Okay, well, shit. I mean, you know, we I could fill a buster for a little bit. See, there you go. You're welcome. This is banned from ringside. Hey, everybody, we got some birthdays this week. Charmel is fifty-one. Darren Young, a.k.a. Fred Rosser, is 40. Cameron is 36. Do you think Cameron and Naomi stay in touch? Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that they're not petty betties. So, yes, they stay in touch. <laughs> Samir Singh yeah, is 36. That's I want to see. <laughs> I want to know Samir Singh is 36. Um do you think that you can tell the Singh brothers apart? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, my God. All, the one I wanted to meet is the guy that took the uh, the bounce off the table where Randy threw him up in the air, and he hits the table, and you can see Randy kind of turns to the camera and is like, ooh, <laughs> my bad, homie. <laughs> uh, Andrade is 34. Nick Aldis is 37. Nick Aldis is only 37? See, this is where I'm just like, your math sometimes or somebody else's math is confounding to me. I'll use that word. So you're saying Nick Aldis is older than 37? Um, if he is 37, I, I'm going to be a little surprised. I mean, and maybe my math is fucked up. Dare K- I say very. King Kong Bundy. R.I.P. Would have been 66. Joey Ryan is 44. Uh, Ted DiBiase Jr., we hardly knew ye, 41. Keith uh, Lee is 39, and Okada is 36. Okada's a Scorpio. Ted, Di- in Ted DiBiase Jr., 25 to life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, we know there's tons of podcasts to listen to, so we appreciate you guys listening to our podcast. Ted DiBiase get dunked on For the my house. beautiful family inside. Jack. For Murray the Murray Man Murray. Jack. For Lucha Chris. For Jack. Patriot Pat. Triple Jack. For Tender Mahal. Jack. For Vice, check. for Three Beards, Zach Pullman. Double check. For Jason Cornelius Bell. Can you I am Bill check. Never ever forget to that Black Lives Matter. Check. Support your local weed dealers. Support Shrubble your check. local restaurants. Yeah, check that too. Call your parents. Check. And never ever forget to boo the heels. Boo!